So guys, all right, for these animals, I'm actually gonna set this camera down and I'm gonna use a second camera that's a little easier to get close-up shots on. Uh, and that's because it's leopard geckos. And, and people, a lot of people ask me about leopard geckos. So I'm gonna start with this one right here, which is actually a uh, hypo, bold, bell, white, and yellow. I mean, just take a look at how gorgeous that is. I mean, that's just a cool looking animal for sure. This one's actually, oh, that sucker is pretty, man. That is really cool. You can kind of take a look at it right there. And I'm going to get a closer shot here of this animal. And again, this is actually a bold tremper white and yellow so that bold what it is is that that pattern right there guys that's right on the back that bold pattern right there that's actually what they call a bold and that's polygenic and then of course it's a tremper which is a recessive and then it's a white and yellow too but wow that thing is really gorgeous oh come on little buddy little feisty monkey all right so this one here this one right here is what they would call again that's got that same bold pattern like right there but it's what they call a bold bell which is a different type of albino of course and uh the uh, the thing that i've said before is the albinos don't mix when it comes to the geckos so you got to keep them separate but take a look at that animal right there uh let's see here this is just uh so there's something that is called an emmerine, which is basically just a gecko that has a little more green pigment that's polygenically bred out. I'm going to show you guys right here. Uh, and again, it's not like overwhelmingly green or anything like that, but you definitely do see a little bit of greenish hues. So that's the emmerine. And this is kind of a hypo. It's got a really cool head pattern, and it's also a white and yellow. And again, that white and yellow gene is something that just kind of enhances things, makes it look cool, kind of jumbles the pattern up and brightens things up so, so that's a really pretty animal and this is just a, actually an eclipse white and yellow right here and uh, get you a little bit closer shot here so this is an eclipse and the eclipse um or, I'm sorry, this is a paddy stripe. This is not an eclipse. The The paddy stripe is what makes eclipse, is what it is. And, all right, there it is. There's what, that's what we're looking for. So this, again, this is the paddy stripe, white and yellow. So, uh, there you go. I'm going to show you this one right here. Oh, gosh, take a look at that. This is actually a sun glow tremper white and yellow. Look at that. That thing is just gorgeous. That white and yellow and that tremper, they make all that really interesting color and palette change. So that's a really cool animal right there. I tell you, I really like that one. And remember we were talking about earlier the bell stuff? Well, this is just a bell, but it's a white and yellow bell. And again, the, the bell stuff is really, really pretty. Um, and then you put that white and yellow gene into it and it becomes really, really gorgeous. I mean, that's really a neat animal. <laughs> Look at that thing. So cute. It's just licking me. <laughs> I'm just going to show you one more gecko and then we're moving on, guys. And that is actually an albino Murphy's patternless gecko. And the Murphy's patternless gecko is basically just like what it sounds. It's uh, actually a, uh, a patternless gecko. Uh, originally, they were calling them leucistics, but because babies, they, they don't really look leucistic. And as they get older, some of them are a little bit white, but not super white. Um, but this is the albino version of it. And again, this is you know, the albino is a tremper, and the Murphy's patternless is a recessive. So you've got two recessives, which is a double recessive. That means that one out of 16 babies, when you breed those double heads together, are going to be the albino Murphy's patternless. So it takes a while when you're only getting two eggs and your odds are that you're only going to get one every eight clutches because they'll lay two eggs per clutch. So so it takes a while. It could be a whole year before you hit one of these or maybe miss completely. But once you have it, this will breed true. I can breed an albino Murphy's patternless to an albino Murphy's patternless and get all albino Murphy's patternless. So it's pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to show you guys a few corn snakes here. This happens to be what they would call a coral ghost corn. And again, the ghost corn is an aneurthristic corn and a hypocorn and then the coral is that really pink so normally these are going to be more like a gray animal but as you can see in this one it's really really pink so uh that that's uh and it's something that we've been working on a lot lately is uh the 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 pink line you know whether it's snow corn annuary corn as a matter of fact i have an annuary corn down here i can show you again the, the annuary corns are typically just uh almost like a, a, a black snake and you can see how the pink is coming out in this snake here and that's just through selective breeding or polygenic so um so yeah so we're doing that and we, we also do it in the snow corn too as a matter of fact i'll show you one right now let me see if i can pull this one up Ugh. this is what the snow stuff looks and again you got that really oh, let me get a little better handle on this one here it's flailing around on me 
So this is the uh, the snow corn version of uh, the coral snow. So we're getting some really pink stuff. Uh, and again, there's you know there's there's just year after year you get better and better quality. So that's what it's really about. So this is actually a plasma corn, right? So this is actually what they would say is a blood red bred to a lavender corn snake. So it's the lavender corn snake that is a recessive mutation and then the diffused corn or the blood red corn bred to that. So, and that just gets that really cool kind of purpley looking awesome snake, you know, a little bit of gray, a little bit of purple. So uh, it's it's really cool. And then I'll show you guys a, a couple babies too, you know, just, I mean, we have so many corn snakes, you know, we have, well, I'll show you a scale that's really quick. Let's see, um, like for instance, this is a little, little tiny baby scale. Look at how cute that is, huh? I mean, that is just a gorgeous snake. And again, the scaleless corn snakes are a recessive mutation. So, so we, uh, we produce quite a few uh, scaleless corn snakes each year. And uh, so we have a bunch of those that are really cool. Um, let's see what else we have here. I'll just show you. You know, we, we, I talked about that diffused corn. That's what a diffused corn looks like. Here, I'll take this out here. This is what a diffused corn snake looks like. That is just a diffused corn, not with the lavender. And then there's even stuff like this uh, Ultra Ghost corn snake, which is basically that Ultra gene uh, that that we showed you in the striped corns and stuff like that. And uh, it's so hard to see these snakes when they're so small. We haven't taken these guys for a walk in a while and they are out of control right now. I am leaving for California tomorrow, so I have a lot of last minute work because I'm gonna be gone. <laughs> So guys, I'm actually leaving tomorrow for LA and I'll be gone for an entire week. Perfect way to spend a autumn day in Michigan at the Apple Orchard. <laughs> Dozen, they're six each. Oh, okay. I, I got a dozen plain too. Oh yeah. Was it worth it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me one. Give me one. Give me one. That's it. Mm, that was good. You get on that truck and they have a bunch of paintballs on the truck which look like there's an airline that goes all the way through so you have unlimited air and you actually shoot paintballs at zombies. How freaking awesome is that? We should do this. We should bring Holy everybody God. from work and do this. That would be really fun. We absolutely need to do this. As soon as I'm back from my trip, we're coming back and literally you can line up. You're, you sit on those benches and you just shoot zombies the whole time. I wonder if we can get one of our guys to go out and shoot them. Get, get Trevor out there. Wow, that is awesome. Oh, shut the door! It's cold in here! It looks like my break from the haunted barn is going to be a long one. I must have had way too much of that hard cider. <laughs> this guy here! Look at this guy! Alright, yeah! Woo! <laughs> 
<laughs> that is why we're here. Number two is to go to the Cider Mill Winery. Uh, just check it out. I don't know what, but uh, it's a beautiful wow. day, so why not check it out? And it looks like, obviously, it's instant fun, I guess. So. <laughs> All right, so we have our uh, ammunition here. I guess the last night home is going to be a little bit of a tasting night. Yes. Okay, we are heading home, and there is a chance that between the two of us, we ate a dozen donuts. What? You ate all those? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest now. I think I ate four or five, maybe five at the most. So you definitely outdid me by at least one. No, that's not true. What is it? That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it is true.